Good morning, Numa Life family. Um, it is such a pleasure and an honor to be worshiping with you today. So this past week in Cape Town, it has been rainy and gloomy, but today, this Sunday morning, the sun is out. So I hope that wherever you are in the world, wherever you are tuning in, that the sun is shining a little brighter today. So before we go into our time of worship and into the word, I want to pray for us and invite the Holy Spirit. Uh, so let us pray. Uh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you are here. Thank you that we are all gathered to, to come and worship you, to come and be in your presence, to come and lift up your name. Father, I pray for every single person who has joined in, for everyone who has come. Um, would they experience you today, Lord? Would they, would they meet with you and encounter you? We welcome you, Spirit of God. Um, yeah, have your way, have your way as we gather to, to worship you. And in your name we pray, amen, amen. Let us go into worship.
Hey, Numa family, thank you for joining us today. If you are a visitor, let us know where you're watching from in the chats, but thank you for being with us today. As we typically do, we take a moment just to pause. We take 30 seconds. Don't worry about who's around you. And let's just ask God to come into the space that you're watching in and just like move in our hearts and speak to us today. So let's take 30 seconds. Let's do that. Close your eyes uh, and don't worry about what's going on around you. God, we thank you that uh, you're faithful. We thank you that we can trust in your word. We can trust in your ways. We can trust in your plans for our life. God, thank you for this day um, where your mercy and your grace is, is new. We love you. We honor you. And we ask all these things in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. As you can see, I have some friends with me today. Um, they're, they're going to introduce themselves here uh, a little bit later on, uh, but we've been celebrating Women's Month. Um, in the first week, I shared a passage scripture around Deborah. Uh, Deborah was a woman in leadership. She was a prophet. She heard directly from God. She was the voice of God for the Israelite community. She was a judge. She was a lover of justice. People would travel from all over to bring their issues and challenges uh, for her to make a decision on them. And we just wanted to encourage women to step into their leadership. Uh, wherever that is, whether that's in their family, their workspace, within their friends, uh, but their leadership is, is needed. And as they do that, to, to create space for others, to honor other women uh, and create that space for them. And then last week, we heard from several women in our community sharing some inspiring stories about women who have impacted them, helped shape and form their own lives. And one of the things that kept coming out was the intentionality uh, that these women had, the time that they had set aside uh, to actually pour in into these young ladies. And then today, we are talking about women's health and their well-being. Um, as we are talking about women being leaders, I think health and well-being holds hands with leadership. Um, it's hard to lead yourself and lead others if you are unhealthy or if you aren't well. And so I think it's only appropriate uh, that, we, that we have a conversation uh, just around women's health and their well-being. And I have some friends, as I mentioned, with me today. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, Renee and Cornell. You can just share a little bit about your profession, what it, what it is you do, what you're an expert in. <laughs> So I'm Renee and I'm a clinical psychologist um, or therapist as it's commonly known by most people and I have a private practice where I see adult clients and that's been going for a few months now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us today Renee. Thanks for having me. And then Cornell. I'm Cornell. I'm a biokineticist uh, and for those who don't know biokineticists <laughs> helps people with injuries and also just general well-being, um, rehabbing type of things. And um, yeah, I've also been in practice for quite a few years. Awesome. So I'm excited. I'm going to put you two ladies on the hot seat today mm -hmm. as we're talking about uh, women's health and well-being. So the first question I want to ask is, like, what does that look like for you in your own life? Because I'm, I'm hearing both of you, you, you lead in your own business. Mm. Um, you are, you know, you you in it. Mm. Uh, so so what does that look like for you? How is it expressed in your in your own life? So it has to be quite intentional, I found, particularly in the last few months where I am running my own business, having to juggle a lot at the same time. Um, and... I like to look at it from, it's kind of a cheat because I'm using some of the things I do in my work to take care of myself, um, which is a biopsychosocial approach, which most health professionals will use to kind of manage someone or help them on their health journey. So the bio is obviously biological. So your physical being, how are you taking care of that? How are you sleeping? How are you eating? Are you taking your vitamins if you need those? When are you having health checks? Um, 
and then the cycle is psychological um, and in there for spirituality your beliefs what are your hobbies what are your interests what are your your passions passion projects how are you feeding into those and then socially as well which is friends peers colleagues who are you leaning on for support um, what are your friendships looking like nurturing those which becomes quite hard when you're managing your own business but I've I found kind of I quickly have to make sure that I'm taking care of all three domains um, and the different kind of um, aspects of each. Um, and the more intentional I am with that, the more kind of equipped I feel to do my work. Oh, that's good. Hmm. That's good. Yeah. I think for me, it's been um, a give and take balance. Um, sometimes we fall into the rut of just giving 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 and then getting not full ourselves mm. so it it's to be open-minded to not just be a giver but also to take so everything you say yes for you're saying no for something else and everything you're saying no for you're saying yes to something else mm. so to have a good balance between your yeses and your noes and then also to to try and be as authentically self yourself as you can be Hmm. Okay. One of the the big issues, big challenges, I think that continues to grow, I think especially with the pandemic, has been around mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the challenges uh, women have had in a work setting has been um, sometimes they're not valued or treated with the same dignity or worth. Uh, in the workspace, in multiple spaces, and obviously that that plays on mental health. Mm. How does one manage or or deal with that type of stress? Mm. Uh, you know, you're in a work environment and you go into that every single day. Mm. Uh, how do you deal with the mental aspect part of that? And then uh, I'll toss that out. Either one of you can can jump in there and answer. So it's a hard one to answer. It's really tough. Um, and I we do see a lot of it and a lot of anxiety actually around workplace issues, a lot of burnout, often not because of the actual work, it's burnout because people, right? Mm. Or systems that are in place and particularly things around value and dignity and your worth being seen or not seen rather. Um, that's quite a common thing that I see in my work. Um, and I guess it's tough to answer because it is kind of a, there's a micro and a macro level to it. There's a personal level to it. And then there's like a societal global kind of fight that's going on for that. And I think it starts with, if it's a starting point, empowering yourself and understanding your worth, understanding your value in what you do um, because you can easily start feeling like, oh, I don't belong here. Oh, I'm an imposter. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not as good enough as them. Oh, do I have to act like a man, you know, <laughs> to, to yeah, make it, sure. to be seen as someone of worth and respect in this space. And I think the starting point is to actually take stock of what you've done, how you got there and reflecting on that and slowly kind of, empowering yourself through understanding your sense of worth it's not immediately going to change what's happening in the environment but i think you will feel a little bit better in those spaces as well as if you're going through that there's likely another woman who's also <laughs> experiencing the same mm. thing so how do you start kind of finding out who you can support and lean on for for support it's, it's highly unlikely you're the only person in that space but it takes kind of speaking up about it and being open and honest about it and saying, oh, I feel there's a microaggression here, right? And I feel it's about gender or it's about race. Um, so yeah, some internal work and then also reaching out to other women around you and seeing how you can support each other in that way. That's good. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add onto that? No, I think... It uh, just from hearing what you're saying is what I'm hearing is self-belief and to 
focus on what it is that you really believe about yourself because if you believe that you're smart you're not going to act stupid so it's to mm. really believe in who you are and um and your strengths mm. and then also like fi- surrounding yourself with people who also believe who you are mm. <laughs> and what your strengths are mm. so that's what i'm really getting out of it i think both of you two you said something which leads us into the the next question is support from other people mm. so you find yourself in this space right you're not being treated with value with worth with with dignity and you're looking for su- support specifically <laughs> from other women mm. how do you deal with uh once again the the mental aspect of it if you're not getting that support mm. from other women you know what what do you what do you do now how do you yeah how do you handle that how do you manage that mm. i think uh i'm just shooting <laughs> i'm just shooting from the hip yeah but uh <laughs> I think uh, maybe even seeking professional help. <laughs> Honestly, that would be if I can't judge other women, I would definitely go to see a professional mm. to help me go through it. Maybe there's some perceptions that I have that's not correct or mm. maybe I'm overly sensitive, maybe mm. I really just need a, a sounding board, maybe I need somebody who can give me practical tips. Mm. I would go for professional help. <laughs> How does that play out physically as well? Um, I know you have your hands involved in, in not only the mind, but also the, the body. Uh, how does that stress maybe begin to play out physically within mm. a woman? And what are some things that they can do to, mm. I think, cope and deal with that as mm. well? Listen, internal stress and emotional stress is a huge thing. It can manifest in so many different ways. It can mess with your sleep, it can mess with how you eat, your relationship with food, how you socialize, your confidence, all of that. And and um, a lot of times it, uh, it causes emotional stress mm. and that emotional stress is almost like a, like a steering, like it's almost like a thing that often drives us mm. is our emotions. Like if you're really happy, then you'll automatically do things happy things yeah. but if you're sad you'll automatically default into doing sad things mm. but you can counter that with things like maybe finding a hobby that you love especially if you can do something where you physically involve your body into like going for a run or walking with a friend or mm. walking your neighbor's dog if you don't have one um, but I would definitely encourage anybody to start doing something that is active something that will get you moving because the moment you move your body your brain starts secreting certain hormones happy hormones um, serotonin good stuff that will lift your spirits give you some even they even show like just changing your posture like just opening up your shoulders being a little bit up mm-hmm. upright automatically um, secretes more testosterone it makes you almost braver it makes you think clearer makes you be able to solve problems better so get moving that would be definitely my thing is get mm. moving mm. that's good so i'm gonna I'm stay in this theme of the workplace here <laughs> so we talked about value and dign- dignity individually and mm. your own uh self-worth and value and then the support but then there's this thing of man not having a place at the table mm. Um, you're in an environment, um, maybe you've been there for several years or maybe you haven't even been there long, um, and you sense and feel that there is not space that is created for you mm-hmm. uh, in the decision-making and everybody else is being included in it, mm-hmm. but you being left out, mm-hmm. and it's specifically because you are a woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and historically, this has happened for for generations mm. and, and years, as we know, different systems and structures and stuff, mm. uh, the way they've been set up. But how does one deal with that? Because that can become traumatic. Mm. Um, how do you go into an environment, um, because you have to earn a living, you have to generate income for your family. Um, how do you go into an environment like that and, and handle the, the well-being part of it? 
knowing that you're not being you're not being included in it specifically because you are a woman. Mm. That's also a, a really difficult um, space to be in, and particularly if it is in the workplace where that is your place of earning yeah. to survive, right? And you know you have things to contribute, but they're not not valued, not accepted, you know, even when you do speak up. Um, and I, I like to think of it like, seasons right and contextualizing what it means to be at that table at that time in your life like what is it and can't not bring in God and say what is it he's doing right now and then what can I learn from the people at the table right and there is the kind of thinking around empowering yourself and then creating your own table right (laughs) and part of Starting your own business is risky, it's scary, it's unpredictable, but it is a form of starting a table if you have the means to do it and stepping out in that way and creating other tables where you can invite other people to sit with you. Um, And I think sometimes having something outside of the work that you do helps in that way. So if you're creating a table, maybe it's not going to be my, you know, um, primary means of income, but something else, or I'm working towards something else while I'm doing this. And just do not underestimate how much you can learn from the people who are at the table, right? Mm -hmm. Even if there's no space for you, you're in that environment, you hear what's going on and kind of taking something while you're there. But at the same time, I acknowledge how difficult it can be. Um, But I think when we think of it in terms of the bigger picture of your life and where you're at, what does it mean in this season? What is God doing in this season for me? Um, and what can I take from that? Yeah, that's that's kind of how I think of it. Because it's, it's not easy to just then decide, oh, I'll leave this job and I'll find something else. But to find perp- a little bit of purpose mm-hmm. and meaning, meaning, that's often when people are able to make meaning of where they're at, that's really powerful for them. So almost hearing you saying like reframing indeed um and trying to take something positive out of the situation yeah it's not always going to change <laughs> it's not right. always going to change you know in the immediacy of it or in the short term but there is something you can take out of mm-hmm. it at the time and if it's a possibility like i was saying create your own table yeah. while you're figuring out those other dynamics. Um, yeah. If I could just add into that, I'm Absolutely. thinking I'm thinking of when Moses was standing in front of the Red mm. Sea and God said, what do you have in your hand? Mm. Like, it was almost like there was no way forward. Like, there was no ways I'm going to have a space at this table, but mm. what do you have in your hand? What do you have to give? And exactly that, like, Create your own table <laughs> and bring what you've got. Um, yeah. Yeah. And really, it doesn't have to be in the area of your work. It can be in a hobby that you turn into something else, yeah. right? Um, and that brings meaning and purpose or another form of meaning and purpose to the season that you'd be in where it's difficult to kind of tackle these very big issues that we're talking mm-hmm. about, actually. They're, they're massive um, issues. And I think the things that we, we're discussing, that we're talking about, obviously they can begin to make you begin to not believe in your mm. voice or trust in your voice, mm. like you have something meaningful to say and to contribute. Mm. How does one deal with the, the mental part of of that mm. because those things they can be they begin to add up mm. you know you not getting treated with the same value word there's no support there's not a place at the table for you and then you begin to take on these thoughts of like maybe what people are telling me is right and i mm. i don't have a voice here and i don't believe mm. uh that i have anything to say of, of value or worth mm. um how does one deal with that I think if I could just say, I sometimes think that those voices in your head, because we all get to a place where 
the one part is you know who you are, you know your strengths, you know you're good at this. Mm -hmm. But then there's always that voice that says, no, it's never going to work. No, you don't, re you're not really good at speaking or whatever it is that it, that's going on in your head. And I think sometimes the truth and the lie is so close. It's almost like oil on water. It's in the same glass, so it's hard to discern mm. which is the oil, which is the water, and they're so close. Mm. You can make the right decision or the wrong decision in a split second. Mm. And I think it's so important when you're at that place, at that really low place, to first of all have discernment, to discern what are these voices that I'm listening to? Is it truth? that I'm listening to, mm. uh, or am I actually partnering and believing a lie? And also, please don't trust your feelings because you're going to feel low <laughs> and therefore you're going to partner with whatever that those mm. words are in your head. Mm. So it's very important to, to be able to discern what is it that you're hearing, but then also you have to fight. You have to fight for what is the truth. Mm. Um, and, and take it and believe it and say it out loud mm. and fight for it. You cannot for one second go down that rabbit hole of, oh, it's never going to change. I'm never going to be good enough. Mm. I'll never get the promotion. I'll never. You cannot allow yourself to go down that road because that road's going to lead to nowhere. Mm. You have to fight for the right thoughts, first of all, and your, your feelings will follow. Mm. Right. That's, that's my yeah. thing. <laughs> I, I believe that for sure. And that's a lot of what I do do at work is mm. helping people to kind of capture and understand the what we call cognitive distortions or thinking errors, right? And just in saying errors says something about how those are negative thoughts and mm. how, like you're saying, those will then feed into your emotions and then those will influence your behaviors. And it creates quite a a spiral um, and once it starts it goes and goes and I think kind of understanding the first knowing what the internal dialogue is like you're saying and the voices and interrogating those voices like what is actually going on inside and being open to that conversation and then a way to kind of uh, capture the negative thoughts or distortions is to understand the core, like where are they stemming from? Um, and what we do in our work sometimes is then try to change that core belief that you might have that is a distortion and change it into a more positive, mm -hmm. more helpful one, or more helpful as we call it, um, more helpful core belief. Um, and those often stem from earlier on in our life they stem from being in an environment where you're brought down constantly, your esteem is brought down, your sense of worth, um, belonging, you know, you're not seen, not acknowledged, and then you are going to be inclined to think in a negative way. But like Cornell said, those thoughts are very close to each other. They, they really are. It can take one thought to switch from a positive one to, to a negative yeah. one. And when you can kind of catch that, what we call also automatic thoughts, when you can catch that automatic thought, it's really powerful to then transform it, which then changes your emotions and your behaviors and how you're going to respond, you know, to a negative environment or to your own <laughs> negative thinking around yourself. Hmm. I think on the other spectrum, we have women who, they do believe in trust in their voice and they are confident in, in who they are they're in their space, they're in the flow of what they're doing mm. and they're speaking and the space is created for the voice to be heard, but it's actually not being listened to. Mm. So, so it's almost like an inauthentic space. Mm. It's like, we're going to give you a chance to, to speak <laughs> and to talk, but we're not really going to mm. take in what you're saying or, or treat it as, as meaningful. Mm. And I think... People can sometimes feel that. Mm. Um, they can feel that when they know somebody's allowing them to, to have a voice, but really not taking any consideration of what they're saying. Mm. Um, how does one uh, stay healthy? <laughs> how does one stay healthy when it's almost like 
yeah, it's like a, 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 a inauthentic fake space <laughs> being created for people to say, I checked the box. Mm. I let a woman speak in this space, but I'm really not listening to mm. and taking into consideration what they what they have to say. Mm. Which goes back to a value and dignity uh, and worth thing. It's a constant fight. <laughs> and it's, you know, not just in the workspace. It's in churches, right? It's in sometimes friendship groups. It's, it's I think, a theme and can be a theme in multiple areas of women's lives. Um, but there's a quote by, oh, I forget who, that says, speak even if your voice shakes, like speak your truth even if your voice shakes. And that's a risk and it can get exhausting, right? Because you're saying, <laughs> I'm speaking, but I'm not being heard. I'm not always being, uh, well, people are hearing, but they're not listening. So there's no you know, authentic response to what I'm saying. But we kind of have to keep showing up. We really do have to keep showing up to those spaces and taking up space and um, and continuing to speak. And I think the rest of the quote goes something like, and eventually someone will hear you, right? Because mm. you you're going to speak and sp eventually someone will hear you. It's almost like planting the seed and kind of believing in the potential of what it is. Um, yeah, speak. Even when your voice shakes, that's that's what I. How do I keep my health while you're doing that? While I'm doing it, so I keep going to the space. I'm digging. I'm tilling the ground. Right. Um. But how do I keep healthy? I think kind of knowing your boundaries and your capacity, and evaluating your capacity for that mm -hmm. thing. Like, is this the right time? Do I have enough? extra strength or capacity mm. to do this mm. is this my fight even <laughs> right is it my fight right. is it a is it a bigger thing that's happening here um but yeah i think knowing evaluating your capacity and again again through that like i was saying biopsychosocial model being aware of your body in spaces being aware of um where your mental health is at at that time do you have support like that's Huge. Do you have people who are going to rally around you and believe in what you're, you're doing? Um, yeah, just checking your capacity, checking in with yourself. Can I, do I have the strength to do this now? Um, how often do I have the capacity to do it? Because um, it will take a toll um, on all aspects of your, your body, your mind. So a lot of self-awareness mm. um, and assessment in where you're at mm. before you begin to step out, engage. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite important to also watch out that when you get into those spaces where you're fighting a lot, the balance is also the first thing that came to mind. But then also to watch ourselves that we don't get to a place where we get so offended <laughs> that you actually start impacting yourself negatively mm. um, I just think of how so many things were fought in the past I'm just thinking of Martin Luther Luther King and how he never compromised on who he was he never compromised on his values mm. for the sake of the fight mm. he stayed true to himself and he, I wouldn't say never, he never became offended. I'm sure there's many times <laughs> where he was like, I want to just stab somebody. But, um, but he stayed the course of his values. He mm. never went right off or left off or said something that he thought maybe people wanted to hear this. He mm. stayed his course and always you know, did it to his values. He mm. stayed. So he allowed his values to center him. Yeah. Um, he knew he was in a in a fight, mm. but the pace that he was moving at was sustainable mm -hmm. and healthy mm -hmm. and healthy for him. Yeah, but then I also heard I heard an amazing thing about him, 
where he wrote a letter to somebody and in that letter he's so honest of where he's at and the letter basically says that he had he got so many death threats mm. so many times people were like i'm going to take you out i'm going to get take your family out but he says there was one time when he got a phone call and he got so nervous about this phone call mm. and in his letter he was completely honest about how fearful he felt and that he couldn't sleep that night and eventually he got up made himself a cup of coffee and he was sitting there and he was just about to quit he was just about to say okay it's quits it's not worth it it's not worth it the risk for my family it's it's just too much mm. and then he had this encounter with god and this encounter just gave him again the strength and the courage to move forward so when you're in those times where you're getting opposition all the time it's not to say that you're never going to be fearful or that you're never want, going to want to quit but it's who are you rooted in mm -hmm. and what are you rooted in um, that I think it plays a huge role in having that balance mm -hmm. that's good I talked about Deborah a couple of weeks ago and um Deborah was a multi-skilled, multi-talented woman. She played several roles. She was leading the nation. She was a prophet. She was a judge. Um, and who knows what else <laughs> she was doing that wasn't listed uh, mm. within the scripture. Uh, so we do see women um, taking opportunities, uh, stepping through open doors, uh, taking on challenges and uh, yeah, I think just more opportunities to be able to move to move forward uh, in life. How does one keep the balance um, between you know taking on more, mm. uh, but still maintaining health, mm. well-being, good frame of mind? Because mm. uh, I think what can happen is um, maybe for quite some time there's been limited opportunities there's hardly been any doors open and now to see the opportunity to step in it mm. and 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 to take on it mm. take it on um and continue to build mm. um, uh, obviously along with that comes stress uh so for those who are watching with us today uh in their in their place where there is an opportunity to start a business and maybe start two businesses or <laughs> I'm working for an organization, but I have a business outside of that. Like, there's so many things people are doing to have their hands in and their skill to do it. Mm. Um, what advice would you guys give in regards to handling the, the stress uh, that comes along, along with that? I think if I could jump in here, what's really been helpful for me is, first of all, the most important thing is get still, get to a place where you can be still. And for us, we're Christians, we get to connect with God, we get to be in his presence, we get to be in his word. Mm -hmm. And that is the utmost important place. And it doesn't, different seasons are going to look different. So maybe in your, like, I know for my last two season, it was early mornings. <laughs> I had an hour to spend yeah. with, with Jesus. <laughs> and then, like, just life got fuller. And then I didn't have that hour. I barely had five minutes. But mm. then in that new season, I learned to spend quality time with God, even mm. if it's in a short period. But, but I, I almost want to say it's dangerous for me to skip that quality time with mm. the Lord. And maybe if you're not a Christian, I would maybe say just find that time to sit still for a moment mm. and just quiet your mind and focus on what you need to be focusing on. Get yourself still. Devices off, definitely. Mm. But um, definitely for me, connecting with God is an absolute must. And then there's three practical things that I always do. The one thing is uh, anticipate my obstacles. So when your diary is so full and there's so much in your mind and you're fighting battles on the one side and do, running around on the other side, is uh, anticipate your obstacles, then prep your environment, and then prep your people. Mm. So just like a practical thing maybe is, I know that in a really busy season, I might not have the time to go for long exercise sessions, but 
but then I'll anticipate that that's an obstacle. I won't have the time. Time is my obstacle. Mm. <laughs> but then I will prep my environment so I know, okay, I'll have a little bit of time and I need to have everything ready. I need to have my shoes ready, my shirt ready, my mm. pants that I'm going to wear. It needs to be out already. So I'm prepping my environment and then I'm prepping my people. Mm. So sometimes my kids will come in, mommy, I want to do this. And, then <laughs> and can you help me with this? And, and, then, um, and then I have to be very clear to say, I've got 15 minutes mm. and mommy really needs these 15 minutes. So I'm quickly going to go out, go for a run, and then I'll come back and I'll help you. So just to prep people and to, to make sure that my husband knows, hey, I'm not going to be home for 15 minutes or half an hour, and um, that he's going to have to make sure nobody burns the house down <laughs> while I'm not there. Um, but yeah, those three things have really helped me on a practical level is to anticipate mm. what's going to happen, prep my people and prep my environment. Mm. That's good. Mm, I think it's also what I'm hearing from you is like intentionality mm. in creating times or moments of stillness and self-care, right? Mm. Um, you have to be intentional about kind of refilling yourself. Mm. Um, if you have multiple roles and challenging roles, um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a, an advocate for self-care. <laughs> um, and just boundaries around that right so again like you're saying at the beginning the balance and assessing your capacity and knowing when to give and take uh, or how you're doing that and how it's affecting you um, but definitely I think every day you do need to have those moments of stillness you can hardly function without moments of stillness, whether it's, you know, like you're saying, if someone's not Christian, if it's a mindfulness or a meditation that isn't, you know, related to spending time with God, whatever else it is, there has to be some time in the day where you still quiet your mind and kind of take stock and physical care, right? Mm. All the other domains, you do need to be taking care of yourself. I think something else is also like, when you have all these things going is mentors and people who've kind of done the same before mm. they can be very honest with you and give an objective kind of view on your capacity mm. what you're doing if you're managing um, and to not underestimate the role that other people can play in supporting you when you're taking on these these new challenges or multiple challenges um, so a bit of doing things internally and on your own, but not forgetting that there are others who can kind of check up on you or check you <laughs> rather mm. to see where you're at. Mm. So I know we've focused quite a bit on women's well-being and health. Mm. Um, and I know there are some men that are watching. Hopefully you are watching men and learning. Mm -hmm. um, how can men play a supportive role, and not just a, a supportive role, but be an advocate mm. uh, for women's health and their well-being. Mm. There's so much that men can do <laughs> to partner with us. I think it's as, sometimes as simple as asking. Mm. Sometimes being up to date on what's going on <laughs> with women's issues, <laughs> reading, like challenging yourself, engaging in conversations with women, about women, kind of checking yourself with your male peers, like what are we doing? How are we speaking about women? How are we empowering them? Um, I think that can be so, so important. And taking care of themselves also, right? Um, their mm. mental health, particularly, I think. Yeah. Um, women are kind of seen as the ones who are more emotional and more in tune with that stuff. But I think when men are able to do that, how they can partner along with women can be really powerful. Um, 
but I, I guess it starts with just engaging around women's issues and speaking to women mm-hmm. and seeing where you can help. And it doesn't have to be a huge, you know, thing. Um, the women who are in your immediate space. Um, yeah, I just I just think of like things like you know, uh, the men are trash hashtags and men being like not all men, like responding with the not all men <laughs> hashtag and. And, and I get that, but there's also, but what does this actually mean? What is it that you guys are grappling with? Um, why would people say that? Um, so, yeah, I find men kind of shy away from the conversations around women, women's health. And there's so much that they can be doing um, to kind of partner with us and just talk, ask what do we need? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's my very personal opinion on that. <laughs> what about you, Pula? Run me a hot bath and massage my <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> no um, I think more on like a leadership uh, way of thinking. I love what you said. All of this is amazing. Um, I think what I would just add is, is teach us. Like, you've been in this leadership thing <laughs> much longer than we have. So mm. teach us. Teach us how could we be better leaders um, without being more mas- masculine, mm. you know. And then also um, protect us. That if you see that something isn't right, even in your workspace, or if you're a student in, mm. at varsity or college, or even at home, if you see that women are not treated equally, like, speak up. Come up for us. Like... You know, stand up for us and with us and um, and then lead us. Like, I don't think, I think most women are not trying to be the leaders, you know. Like in Afrikaans, we'd say, say, Drani Brook, which means <laughs> she's the guy who wears, she's the one who wears the pants, you know. But we don't always, we don't actually want to wear the pants. <laughs> We're fine in skirts. But we would love for you to lead us. So yeah. lead, lead us as well. Yeah. I was thinking there's a, a book in our profession called On Learning from the Patient. And I'm like, we could write a book like On Learning from Men, particularly around, like you're saying, leadership, mm-hmm. value, sense of worth. Like, there's a lot to be learned. And yeah, to not, we don't have to go it alone, right? Mm-hmm. Even in our women's struggles, men can come mm-hmm. along and teach us something, yeah. right? Empower us. They can. You know, man speaking on your behalf when you're not feeling seen or heard. Yeah. Just, it, it makes a difference. It really does. And can you imagine the amount of respect somebody's going to have for you? If if a guy stands up for a girl, I mean, that girl's going to have a hell of a lot of respect <laughs> for you. Yeah. Um, like, I was, I was looking at a documentary on Saudi Arabia and just how women have no rights there. They're not allowed to drive. They're not... Up until recently, they weren't even allowed in the same malls as men. Um, and I thought, yo, if those guys, if the princes of those places could include women, what a powerful kingdom it could have, it could be, if you have the support of women as well, because women are actually very powerful. And if you have got them on your side you can do a lot more you can achieve more than what you could have imagined so yeah i would often do that as well encourage men to so any final words uh just for women that are watching today in regards to their health and well-being what would you what would you encourage them i think that it's it's okay to not be doing everything on your own you don't have to like i was saying earlier when there are struggles it's like you're not the only woman in that space going through that to reach out for help to go to therapy um that stuff is really empowering to lean on other women to lean on men it doesn't have to be other women um yeah and to to not shy away from from any of that but to also kind of interrogate your internal voices and kind of amplify Mm. the positive ones the affirming ones the validating ones 
their envy um, and yeah just turn up the volume I think <laughs> and if you struggle to do it on your own to seek to seek help in doing that I think for me it would be um, really try not to compare yourself with anybody else um, I think we, we didn't touch on social media but yeah, please remember that whatever you watch on social media, you only see a snippet of somebody's life and it's the best snippet they've got. <laughs> so please don't compare yourself to anybody else and think that you need to be more than who you are. Mm. And then also in the same breath, be patient with your journey that you're on getting to know yourself. Because mm. sometimes you don't just know who you are and know your strengths it's really like learning as you go learning to know what you like and what you don't and what's your strengths um, and I think I mean really fight fight for that inner voice that builds you up um, and sometimes it's 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 easier to fight for that voice if you can switch your focus a little bit um, and put your focus on on the, on the, the better things, the more positive things. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for answering some of these questions. Um, yeah, and letting me facil facilitate a conversation. Mm -hmm. Renee, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. will, you, will you pray for us? Will you pray for those that are, that are watching? I do. <laughs> okay. Dear Lord, Thank you for this space. Thank you for a space where that has been created for women to speak and their voices to be heard. Um, I pray for all the women in the church, the women in the country, in the world, Lord, and for all the things that we face and struggle with on the daily. I pray that through all of it, you'll remind us of your purpose and your plan and the bigger picture for our lives, Lord, and that you know, we wouldn't um, go it alone. Um, I pray that when we are down, we feel somehow empowered enough to, to seek help, Lord, and to not be ashamed of that, um, to be honest about where we're at. Um, and I pray that we will always, you know, figure out how to amplify our voices and find people that will partner with us, people that will be welcoming and will allow us to sit at the table. Um, Lord, and when we, we don't have that space, that you would guide us and kind of order our steps in the way that we should go. Um, I pray for the mental health of women and the multiple struggles and difficulties that they face, Lord, um, that you would let them know that it's okay and that your perfect peace, your plan, and your purpose for their lives will prevail. And yeah, I pray that we would focus on our health, that we would not neglect any of the different parts that you have given us, that we would um, find ways to balance our time and our space, Lord, and that, yeah, that we would be honest and authentic um, and bring our full selves to whatever spaces we're in, Lord. Um, thank you for who you are. Um, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I also want to, um, yeah, invite you. Um, maybe maybe you're watching today and something is moving and happening in your, in your heart uh, and you feel the Lord knocking on the door of your heart and he's inviting you into a relationship with him. Uh, into family, into into his governance of your life, uh, into his lordship, um, and the Holy Spirit is helping you in this moment see and understand your need for him in your life. Uh, we want to come in agreement with what the Lord is doing in this moment. Um, as you utter the word yes, uh, yes to his will, yes to his way, uh, yes to eternity. Uh, so, Father, we thank you for the one uh, that's watching today, uh, that you stare their hearts, uh, that they're saying yes. We pray that uh, even in this moment that they would feel your tangible presence, uh, 
Uh, may there be an exchange, uh, beauty for ashes, uh, joy for their mourning, uh, peace for their anxiety. Uh, we just pray that they would feel it right now in this moment. God, we say thank you. Um, we say thank you even as the angels are rejoicing in heaven over the one. Uh, we, we praise God for, for their life and the decision that they're making today. Uh, we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. If you're on here today and you made that decision, um, we'd love to get connected with you. We'd love to learn your story, find out how we can journey with you, get you plugged into community. Uh, there's a couple of ways we'd love to do that. One is there's going to be a WhatsApp number that's going to pop up on the bottom of the screen. You can simply just message that number if you hear it locally, and one of our team will follow up with you. You can also go to our website uh, that'll pop up on the bottom of the screen here as well, and you can fill out a connect card, uh, and one of our team will follow up. And then there are people in the chat, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, uh, there are people that are there ready to pray with you and seal this decision uh, that you made today. So thankful that you joined us for this conversation. We're going to continue next week. Uh, celebrating Women's Month. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your Sunday, but stay on. We have announcements and offering coming up, but we'll see you next Sunday. We are now going to go into our time of giving and of offering. Thank you. Thank you for all that you have given to the kingdom. Thank you for, all, for the time that you have given and the finances and the resources. Um, and so as we set this time apart to give back to, to God, to give back to his work, I am going to pray for us. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for, um, for just everything that you are. Thank you for, for provision. Thank you that you, you come through and, and you provide, Lord, for every need, for every thing that we, we ask of you, God. Thank you that you provide. And even in this time, as your people give, uh, we pray, Father God, that you would multiply, um, that they would never be in lack, but that they would always know that you are, you are their Jairah in, in, in all their moments. Um, so thank you, God. And in your name we pray, amen. Amen. And lastly, for announcements, I have two announcements for you today. The first one is that on the 28th of August, we'll be having our prayer and encouragement right after our in-person service. So if you would like to pray, if you want people to come together with you um, and pray, please do come to that prayer and encouragement time. Um, and lastly, we are looking for people to serve in our lyrics and media team. So if you are good with computers, if you are quick on your feet and can solve problems that come up, then we are looking for you. So please go onto our website, fill in um, a card, and somebody from our team will get back to you. That's all I have for you today. Have a blessed week, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye.